let's talk about bulls, because they're an animal that's been a key part of the world for thousands of years. And there are people who not only raise this animal, but worship it in some cultures. It's a symbol for many nations, and they're known for various things. But what may surprise you is that there are many different kinds of bulls out there in the world, and some of them are extremely rare. Like, I'm talking only born once in a generation or so rare. Would you like to learn about them? Well, good, because here now are 20 bulls that are born only once in a thousand years. Number 20. The American Brahmin. I'm going to begin with the American Brahmin, because it's a breed that, well, looks much different than the bulls that you may be used to seeing. Furthermore, these bulls are born once every thousand years. Not really, I mean, it wouldn't be cool if they were, would it? Regardless, these bulls are not typical because they are thick. And yes, that's just how the breeders in question want them to be. Because these are not your typical bulls in regards to origin, as they're a hybrid cattle, bulls from various other species that came from multiple countries that are the ones you're seeing on your screen now. These were mainly the Gur and Gazira and Nalor stock, with some from Brazil and Krishna and so on. But because of the mixture of species within them, the American Brahmin is actually really resistant to things like heat, parasites, and more. After they became popular, they were then sent all over the world. In fact, Australia is so in love with these bulls that they're the most numerous cattle that you'll find there. And that begs the obvious question, does that bull have good meat? I mean, after all, you don't have bulls like these to just look at, right? Well, that's where one of the ironies of this species comes into play. Because they do have good quality meat, however, it's a lower quality than the breeds that are literally bred for good quality of product. Now, that's not to say that the American Brahmin is a dud, as that's not the case. The need for this bull was to survive in places with tropical weather, where heat would usually be a deterrent to cattle raisers. But because of its resistance, it can be used to send quality meat out regardless of temperature. It won't be the finest slab that you've ever tasted, but it will be nice to eat, no doubt. And given how large these things can be, how could they not produce some good chunks of meat to consume? Number 19. Bodacious Bull have you ever met someone that was truly bodacious? I'm talking someone who was so excellent that it would put even Bill and Ted to shame. One who was so admirable that you thought that they were an admiral. Someone who was so attractive. Well, I'm not talking about the literal definition of bodacious. There's a bull that's called that. Well, it will make more sense. The irony of that name is that the bodacious bull was far from an excellent or an admirable bull. That is, unless you appreciate how it could buck off rodeo riders without breaking a sweat. Bodacious was known throughout the rodeo world as the world's most dangerous bull. He was also known as the greatest bull to ever buck. And during his rodeo career, he was the 1994 and 1995 Professional Rodeo Cowboy Association Bucking Bull of the Year, as well as the 1995 Professional Bull Riders World Champion Bull. Now, that's quite the pedigree to have, and it makes it all the more interesting that they called him bodacious versus something a bit more mean-spirited. But I guess that rodeo riders have a sense of humor in their own way. The joke was on them, though. If they tried to ride this bull, I'm not joking when I say that he was so vicious and gifted at his job that he actually injured two different bull riders. He was doing so much damage to them that he was retired before any more harm could be done. And that's a good thing, to be honest. Yes, rodeo riding is one of the most dangerous sports out there, but you also need to be able to at least believe that you're going to ride a bull without taking an injury, instead of it being a true sure thing. Either way, the bull is in the Hall of Fame for the sport, so its legacy will never be forgotten. Number 18. Raton. In terms of sports, there are two bulls that are most known. The first is the rodeo riding events that they take on humans in, but the other is the realm of bullfighting. This is one of easily the most controversial because if the people make a single mistake in their performance, they could easily become gored by the bull in front of a live audience. And let's be clear, nobody wants to see that. Enter Raton. 
a bull that was bred in Spain for the sole purpose of bullfighting. Now, you may underestimate this bull when you first see it because it's rather small compared to the other ones in the world. But in truth, it's one of the most dangerous and deadly bulls to have ever graced the bullfighting arena. He was brought into the ring when he was only a year old, and during the initial five years of his career, he got quite the reputation. What kind of reputation? Well, one for injuring nearly every bullfighter that ever dared to cross him. Because of his long legs and violently shaped head, it had multiple tactics to be able to take on bullfighters and make them regret all of their life choices. In fact, in August of 2006, Raton took the life of a man in his 50s who was a spectator at an event. That's right, he didn't only kill a fighter, he killed a spectator, and that wouldn't be the only life that he had claimed. In 2008, he killed a second person, a young matador and spectator at an event near Valencia. Then, a few years afterwards, he took the life of another spectator after they got drunk and hopped into the ring to meet him, and that's when the bull sent him to an early grave. But why was the bull allowed to keep on going after all of these deaths? Well, it's quite simple. It was an attraction, and people love a good spectacle, which is why bullfighting is so controversial even today. Number 17. Belgian Blue. Now, I know what you're thinking. No, I really do. You're thinking, uh, that bull isn't blue, like at all. And you'd be correct, and so am I. That bull is not blue in the slightest. It's just called that because for, well, many reasons, really. But unlike the last two entries I've shown you, this bull was not built for the fighting arena in any sort of way. This is another kind of bull that was built simply to be used as cattle, and thus create a nice kind of meat. But what separated this unique bull from the others is the body type that has allowed it to be a unique product. Braids like this bull have increased ability to convert feed into lean muscle via double muscling, which causes these particular breeds meat to have a reduced fat content and an increased tenderness. That in the food industry can be a good thing because it means that a more refined product can be eaten and processed and prepared for other food products. The weight of an adult male bull ranges anywhere between 1,000 to 1,250 kilograms for the height at the withers of about 1.4 meters to 1.5 meters. And they're known for their nice temperament, their ease of calving, and their adaptability to wherever they may be living. They're a good kind of cattle, and that's why many enjoy raising them. Number 16. Piemontes. As a great man once said, life uh, finds a way. And when it comes to the Piemontese species, that's proven in a very special way. You see, this species wasn't born by man, but rather by nature. They come from the Piedmont region of Italy, where their birth species found a place that was surrounded by the Alps, and that ensured them protection while they lived their lives. They became very accustomed to the area, and were able to make several adaptations that would become very popular later on. For example, remember that whole double muscling thing? Well, that technique was originally born with these cattle, and once breeders found them while exploring Italy, they knew the potential that these bulls could have when crossed with other species. The first Italian herd book was opened in 1887, and breeding programs were designed to improve the herd and eliminate detrimental aspects associated with double muscling. Now, as would be discovered later on, there's actually a gene in the body that restricts muscle growth in animals after a certain point. But with these bulls, that gene doesn't work like it should because it was mutated over time. That also meant that the bulls could continue to grow their muscles, and so double muscling became a thing. Another thing that makes the breed so special is that they don't consume a whole lot of food, and they're rather efficient to raise. So, when you add that to the kind of meat they produce, you can easily see why so many people are high on them, and others like them as well. And it's all because of how they grew over time, and the mutations along the way. Number 15. Diamond the Unicorn Bull Diamond the Unicorn Bull was a bull that was born in the world, and the reason that it was called a unicorn, well, it's because it had a horn that grew in the middle of its head instead of out of the sides. When you look at pictures of Diamond and its horn, you just have to admit that's a very unique look. Plus, as you can see, it's the only horn this bull has, which makes it even more odd outright, because bulls are supposed to have two of them clearly coming out of the sides, 
and Diamond perhaps just didn't get the memo. So, how can we explain this kind of development? Well, to put it simply, the genes of Diamond decided to do something a bit different than what a typical bull or its owner has in mind. Yeah, 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 yeah. As we've already shown you, mutations in animals can happen and affect animals in weird ways. Granted, no one would have expected a bull to go from two horns to one, and then that one to be in the middle of the head, but, you know, that's the way it goes sometimes. And to be blunt, this is hardly the weirdest mutation that we've ever seen or heard of from an animal. There have been animals born with multiple mouths, one singular eyeball, and the wrong number of legs, and so on. So, just like there are humans who are born with oddities, so too can a bull be, if it's lucky enough. A unicorn born in the wild? Well, you know, stranger things have happened. Number 14. The Belted Galloway. The Belted Galloway's defining feature is the distinctive white belt around the middle. They are also polled, which means that they're naturally hornless, so that's quite a bit different from any of the other bulls that you've seen so far showing you that nature is not afraid to shake things up when it wants to. Ironically, because of that belted appearance, some people literally just enjoy raising them for their looks. Now, that's a bit surprising. I mean, after all, bulls are typically raised for the purposes of selling and breeding, not because it blends in with the pasture very well. But, you know, to each their own. And to those of you who like that idea, it should be noted that the belted Galloway is a very docile bull, it's easy to raise, and it's not going to be prone to running off when things go wrong. They were actually bred to be able to withstand tough conditions in Scotland. So, much like the people of that nation, they're not afraid to stare down adversity and hold their ground. William Wallace would be proud of this bull for sure. Number 13. Red Wolf Bull. Now, I already like this bull, because it's named after a wolf in part, and if you don't know, wolves are awesome, and we should be ashamed of how we've treated them over the years. However, this wasn't just a nicely named bull, it was also a rodeo bull who took no prisoners, no matter what your credentials would be. Now, during his second year in the PBR in 1995, Red Wolf made quite the impression in Rancho Murrieta, California, when he bucked off Heroes and Legends Celebration, Ring of Honor inductee, and livestock director-to-be, Cody Lambert, in just 4.09 seconds. And that's not all. This bull was also said to have a swagger to it when it entered the ring. He knew that he was hot stuff, and that the rodeo riders had to be on the top of their game if they dared to be on him. To that end, he bucked off rodeo riders until he was 12 years old, and that's a mighty ripe old age for a bull, yet it never slowed him down until he was forcibly retired. He lived another six years before passing on, and you can bet that he wanted to keep bucking off people all the way until he passed. And that's one of those things that can be said for these rodeo bulls. They're meant to be the cream of the crop, and no matter which one you face, if you're not careful, you're going to go flying. Number 12. The Beef Master. Now, gee, I wonder what this bull was made for. Because clearly its name doesn't give any indication to what its endgame was. No, not at all. So we'll just have to do some deep research to figure it out. Seriously though, the Beef Master breed is a very special kind of bull that was made in Texas. And what made it so special is that it wasn't specifically a hybrid of two cattle. Instead, it was a composite bull. That means that it had multiple breeds that went into one final product. The thing that probably most differentiates the Beef Master from other breeds is the six essentials, which were the founding selection principles upon which the breed was formed. Disposition, fertility, weight, conformation, hardiness, and milk production. That's not asking for much now, is it? However, the truth is that the breeders wanted a bull that could do a lot and withstand a lot, like being in the Texas heat, which can be quite hard on both people and animals. Plus, its traits could be passed on to other bulls and breeds over time, and that would make a unique hybrid that could deliver great results as well. To that end, the Beef Master is known as the Profit Breed, and you likely know that there are a few things that Texans like more than Profit. 
Ironically, due to their breeding, they don't have a standard color or look, but for the breeders, it's literally a case of it's the inside that counts. Number 11, the Boron Bull. Now, given all the crossover breeds that you've seen so far, aka the ones that were put together by human breeders over the decades, it may actually surprise you that there are still some pure breeds left in the world that are doing just fine on their own. One of those is the Boron Bull. This bull in question is from Ethiopia, and its last change in terms of genes came in 700 AD. That's right, the bull has been living unchanged for over 1300 years, and that's a long time to go without any kind of human interference, especially in the world that we live in now, where everyone wants to try and make something special out of something old. Now, there is a set of ironies that do come with this pure breed status. First, because it's been in Africa for so long, many of the things that could affect cattle, especially hybrids, such as parasites or certain diseases, well, they don't affect this bull because they've grown used to it or have adapted to resist it. The second irony is that because it's a purebred species, it's one that can be better used in making special hybrids because its vigor is better than the hybrid or composite species that have been made in recent times. But to be clear, there are also plenty of people who are fine with just having the boron bull and using it for their own needs. Sometimes their needs is simply just making a bunch of them to sell to breeders so that they can then make hybrids. Welcome to the glorious world of the cattle industry. Number 10, the Sultan. Now, if you're familiar with the horse trade, you'll know that sometimes the most valuable horses weren't only the stallions who could go fast and do lots of work or look really good, but they could also possibly give birth to even better horses. As such, the stud fee part of the industry was one of the most lucrative that you could get if you did have a great horse. Why am I talking about horses? Well, because the bull trade could be the same way. And the Indian bull known as Sultan was one who had the nation in awe of its majesty. And people would pay a hefty fee to its owner for some, you know, genetic legacy. <laughs> The owner would tour the bull all over the country, and people would literally line up to see it. You can bet the owner would have gotten a large lump sum had he sold the bull, but he decided to keep it and raise it as its own son. That's certainly a choice. Number 9. The Gower Bull now we'll talk about one of the biggest bull species that you're ever going to see. The Gower is the largest extant bovine. It's a strong and massively built one that you can see here, and yeah, it makes for a pretty big bull. I wouldn't want to mess with it, not one little bit. But that's where the sad twist comes into play. Despite the impressive stats on this bull, it's one that is endangered species, and most of the Gower bull species reside in India. And as of 2016, there were only about 21,000 of them left in that country. Now, while I can't say what they're at right now, because it's still low even if it has grown a bit over the seven years, there are many species that are endangered. And so let's hope that we can save this bull and others before it becomes too late. Number 8. Parthenus Bull Next up, we have a very big bull from France known as the Parthenus. This bull can be nearly 2 meters in height and weigh over 1,200 kilograms. They've served many purposes in France over the years, which includes being both draft animals and ones that you could get good meat out of. And the bull is also known for its rich-tasting beef. That's why you'll see so many of them in France if you travel around. They're also another breed of bull that have the double muscling gene in them, and that helps to add to their beef content. And, as if the French didn't have enough reason to like these bulls, they can survive in all kinds of conditions. It doesn't really bother them in the slightest. So, when you have a bull that's big, can do the work, can taste great, and live almost anywhere, well then that's when you've got a winner. Number 7. South Devon. South Devons are the largest UK cattle breed, and they hold their own in the world stage as well. Which is something that I'm sure the UK is proud of in various ways. One of the reasons they're so popular in the region is that they can grow really fast. That made them perfect for both draft work and to be sold for meat. After all, if you can grow them fast, then the meat will soon flow. Number 6. 
That's how the saying goes, right? Once upon a time, this bull was actually valued for its milk over its meat, and the milk production it had was quite substantial. This is another kind of bull that can be without horns, though if it does get its horns, they're usually facing downward, which is not something that most would expect. Either way, the UK does love them, and they'll keep being used until their roles can't continue any longer. Number six, the German Angus. Yep, it's a bull that's called Angus, so you know what's coming, right? Yeah, it's another beef cattle, but one that had to get a little bit of work done to get where it is now. This one was bred in the 1950s in Germany by crossing an Aberdeen Angus with various native German cattle breeds, like the German Black Pied, the Deutsche Rotbunde, and another one that I'm not going to even try to pronounce. That's a lot of work to get the desired breed. But in truth, breeding is all about trial and error, until you get the thing that you want. Sometimes the wait can be worth it, and that was the case in this one. Specifically, the goal was to develop a hornless, good temperament, large-sized bull, while also getting meat that had a lower fat content than pure Angus cattle, and some high milk yields. Despite being German-made, it's actually very popular in the United States, and is sold to the United States often. Number five. Texas Longhorn. Now, where could this bull be from? They really should name them better so that we can at least have a clue of where they originated. All jokes aside, we have more in the bag. The Texas Longhorn Bull is a very popular breed from the United States that is raised primarily for its meat. While they do have their drawbacks, which includes being slow to mature, they also have plenty of bonuses for those who are willing to raise them. Longhorns have a natural resistance to the most common cattle diseases and parasites, which includes the worst enemy of range cattle, the screw worm. Plus, those cows are willing to eat multiple kinds of grass, which helps the farmers as that means that they can house the cattle in smaller areas. And clearly their meat is good, because they were willing to name a restaurant after them, and that's no bull. See, <laughs> told, you, told you I had more jokes. Number four, Lurch Bull. Now, if you want to see a true once every thousand years kind of bull, you need to look only at the bull known as Lurch. You know, kind of like the butler from the Adams family, but instead of being a really tall bull, he's just one that has the world record for the largest horn circumference in history. Believe it or not, he actually set the record for largest circumference twice. He was measured once, and then before his death, his horns had gotten even bigger. and were over 96 centimeters in circumference by the end. Then, when you measured his horns from tip to tip, you would find out that they were actually over 2.5 meters long. Now, while it wouldn't be easy getting gored by this bull, if it was so inclined to do that to you, you would die really quickly. So, you can take that as a positive. But seriously, the bull seems like an impossibility because those horns are so huge. But sometimes the impossible has the ability to happen. Number three, the Nalore Bull. Next up, we have the Nalore Bull, another breed with a lot of history. The origins of the Nalore date all the way back over 2,000 years, when the Aryan people brought the ancestors of this breed to India, and then later on they were brought to Brazil, believe it or not. Nalores have long, deep bodies with clear underlines, keeping vulnerable parts out of the way of infection, and due to these body choices, they're actually really easy to breed, which is why they've been so useful to so many countries over the years. Oh, and yeah, uh, that is a hump on its back, I assure you. That's intentional, and they don't seem to mind. Number two, Humphrey. As we all know, there's always going to be the biggest of something for us to find, admire, and gloat over if we own it. But there's also going to be the shortest of something out there that can also be beloved. For example, in the category of shortest bull ever, we have Humphrey. Humphrey is a miniature Zebus. which are known for being incredibly small, despite being, you know, bulls. Humphrey was only 106 centimeters, which is freaking tiny, compared to the other bulls that you've seen so far. And yet, ironically, the world's smallest cow is actually shorter than Humphrey. But to their owners, you know, size doesn't matter. Number one, Yak. 
Most of you have likely at least heard of the yak species, as it's one that is popular in the region of Tibet and has been shown off in various ways all over the world. Yaks are heavily built animals with bulky frames, sturdy legs, rounded cloven hooves, and extremely dense long fur. They need all of that to survive in the territory that they're in, and they're good for doing the labor that humans can't in those conditions. They also can be quite large, with some growing so large that they could easily take a person down without a whole lot of effort. In other words, you definitely don't want to talk back to them. And that's all from the realm of bulls, and that's no bull. Now, did you enjoy this deep dive into the diversity of bulls and all the ones that can be found in the world? And which ones do you feel are the coolest of the bunch? Let me know all about it in the comments down below. Be sure to check out the other cool things that are showing up on the screen, and I'll see you next time.